Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft is busy finalizing the next optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 23H2 users, which they made available late yesterday in my part of the world on the 13th to insiders in the release preview channel. And the next optional update would be KB5053657, and that will be rolling out over the next coming days for 23H2. And I would suggest the release date to the general public would start on Tuesday the 25th in that last week of March 2025. Now we get six new features that have been made available with this update. All rolling out gradually, which is common. Microsoft likes to push new features out on a gradual phased rollout. And the next couple of new features and fixes I'm going to mention are all rolling out gradually. So you may or may not get them if you decide to install the update at the get-go. Now the first new feature is actually an accessibility feature for the File Explorer. So if we head into Accessibility Text Size, Microsoft says this release includes increased support for the text scaling across File Explorer file open and or save dialogues and the copy dialogues so that's a bit of a improvement in regards to accessibility with 23h2 which i'm always in favor of and then settings gets two new features and a fix and the first new feature microsoft says it has enabled the settings home page on commercial devices with your accounts card okay so that's only available for commercial customers and won't be affecting your average home user, so to speak. And then there's the new top cards. And I have posted on this previously, but just a quick recap. Such as storage, graphics, installed RAM, processor. These are little top cards that give you quick references to information regarding you know, important hardware and the main system components um, in your device. And these will be at the top of the About Settings page uh, on System About, as you may well know. And I have posted quite a bit on that. Um, if so, just do a search accordingly on the channel if you would be interested. And then there's a fix for Japanese users where Microsoft says, if we just head back into our settings, where Microsoft says, the name displaying at the top of settings accounts shows first name, last name, instead of last name, first name. So try to say that quickly a couple of times, but nonetheless, that's for the Japanese users, obviously, and is region specific. And then we get, for input, we get two new features. And this first new feature for input was actually pulled a couple of months ago where Microsoft had to continue um, testing it and working on it because it was um, given a couple of problems. And I see now they're starting to push it out again. So I think a lot of Xbox users are going to be quite happy regarding this, where Microsoft says it has enabled the gamepad keyboard layout for the touch keyboard. This change introduces the ability to use your Xbox controller to navigate and type and this includes button accelerators, so as an example, X button for backspace, Y button for spacebar. Additionally, the keyboard keys have been vertically aligned for better control and navigation patterns. So there we go. That's finally making its way back into the stable version. And this next one I'm just going to mention because I have posted a whole video on this where and Microsoft says they are rolling out a new experience to improve the discoverability of the emoji and more panel in Windows 11, which will introduce a new system tray icon on the taskbar. Now, I have posted a whole video on that, giving you my thoughts, what I think about that. That will be linked as mentioned down below and in the end screen. And then they fixed the ctfmon.exe which may restart when copying data from certain applications. And that's quite an important under the hood fix. And um, if you don't know what ctfmon.exe is all about, it stands for Collaborative Translation Framework and is a Microsoft process that runs in the background and is used by Microsoft Office to control the alternative user input text input processor 
and the Microsoft Office Language Bar. So that's just a quick overview as to what that is all about. That's quite an important fix. And then for the task manager, Microsoft say they are changing the way task manager calculates your CPU utilization for the processes, performance and user pages. Task Manager, they say, will now use the standard metrics to display CPU workload consistently across all pages, aligning with industry standards and third-party tools. And then they also mention that for backward compatibility, a new optional column called CPU utility is available, hidden by default, on the Details tab showing the previous CPU value used on the Processes page. And I have posted on that previously so um, you can go check that out do a search on the channel if you want more information regarding um, that CPU utility which is hidden by default so that's a couple of improvements rolling out for task manager now those were all the new features and fixes rolling out gradually with this next optional update and then just to mention a couple of improvements and fixes that are rolling out normally um, this update will enhance text quality and customer experience in web browsing for Chinese, Japanese and Korean languages by introducing the No2 font family. And this is also rolling out to Windows 10, as I posted earlier today, with Microsoft saying this provides modern comprehensive font support for these languages. And then there's a fix for remote desktop where certain get help troubleshooters might not run in a remote desktop session. And here's an important fix. Um, there's a printer fix where printers using independent hardware vendor RHV drivers might unexpectedly output incorrect or unwanted text. Now, I posted on this the other day where it was a known issue, which Microsoft actually fixed with a known issue rollback. But obviously now, just to make double sure, they are pushing out a bug fix for this. And I'll leave that other video regarding this printer issue linked down below and in the end screen. And then there's a crash fix which is always important for the file system where the update resolves an issue for users with profiles redirected to a network virtual hard disk vhd or vhdx where a specific failure could lead to a system crash so that's an important fix rolling out and then there is a deprecation which we have spoken about previously on the channel where suggested actions that appear when you copy a phone number or future date in windows 11 are now deprecated and been removed and i have posted on that on the channel previously and then the final is they've improved support for web search providers in windows search for the eea including with increased discoverability so guys that's more or less what to expect in our next optional bug fix series update for windows 11 23 h2 rolling out over the next couple of days and just a side note um the update is still in preview currently so what we have spoken about in today's video could um, change, give or take, um, when it comes to new features and fixes, when it actually rolls out um, to the general public. So just be aware of that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.